It's alarming how little we know about the inner workings of the market. And I am thankful that this committee is examining what happened. I also want to say that I support retail investors' right to invest in what they want, when they want. I support the right of individuals to send a message based on how they invest. We've been short GameStop since Melvin's inception six years earlier because we believed and still believe that its business model, selling new and used video games in physical stores, is being overtaken by digital downloads through the internet. And that trend only accelerated in 2020 when, because of the pandemic, people were downloading video games at home. As a result, the gaming industry had its best year ever but GameStop had significant losses. In the frenzy during January, GameStop stock rose from $17 to a peak of $483. I do not think anyone would claim that the price had any relationship to the intrinsic value of the business. The fact that GameStop traded temporarily above fair estimates of the company's value is not, by itself, a reason for concern. Stock prices move in and out of alignment all the time, and markets are no strangers to bubbles. If a company is valued by the market differently than a review of its fundamentals suggests, it might indicate that the analysis is missing relevant information about a company's prospects, or it might indicate that the company's stock price is due for a correction. In early June of 2019, the price of GameStop stock declined below what I thought was its fair value. I invested in GameStop in 2019 and 2020 because, as I studied the company, I became more and more confident in my analysis. Two important factors, based entirely on publicly available information, gave me confidence that GameStop was undervalued. First, the market was underestimating the prospects of GameStop's legacy business and overestimating the likelihood of bankruptcy. Second, I believe that GameStop has the potential to reinvent itself as the ultimate destination for gamers within the rapidly growing $200 billion gaming industry. So you recommended uh, GameStop uh, before. Would you buy their stock now at roughly 45? It started at 48 earlier today. You were talking about buying it and being happy uh, when it hit cross 20. So are you buying that stock today? Well, let me just say that investing can be risky, and my particular approach to investing is rather aggressive and may not be suitable for anyone else. But for me personally, yes. So, yes or no, are you buying the stock? And for me well, personally, yes, I do find it's an attractive investment so my, at this price point. Did you buy game stock because uh, you were not aware of the payment for order flow? My investment in GameStop was based on the fundamentals. You're a very uh, serious investor, somebody who does his homework, invests in the market, your own personal funds. And so I guess the question would be here today, we're discussing the actions around Robinhood, all the transactions that took place. Do you think we need more legislation as a result of what happened here or did the system actually work? I would say my expertise is in analyzing the business, the fundamentals of the business, not so much on the inner workings of the market. I'm not so sure about legislation per se. What I would say is that increased transparency could help. That if someone like me could have a better understanding of how those types of things work, I feel as though it would be quite beneficial to retail investors.